In the beginning was the dog. The real name of Jehovah is a rover. Adam's rib is buried in the garden. There was a young creature from space who entered a three-legged race. He was not very fast, in fact he came last because he was a bag of oven-ready chips. They can call me softy, as softy, as they please, but still I'll stand by. They stop me walking into lampposts and trees When it's foggy And I'm out walking with my doggy My doggy don't wear glasses So they're lying when they say A dog looks like it's own Bad 
I've seen people with mud on their glasses I've seen people with blood on their glasses Once I saw a lad who had the leg of an addy Long legs on his glasses You've got to clean your glasses If you want to see This poem is called Luton, and um, it's about the town of my upbringing, and it's also about the conflict between my working class origins and the middle class status conferred upon me by a university education. Luton. I remember Luton as I'm swallowing my crouton. The next one's a bit more serious. In the playground, the children are playing a game of kiss chase. And one of the children, who seems to want to be chased after, calls out above the screams and laughter, Don't chase me! Don't chase me! And nobody does. It's not much of a planet that everybody leaves. There's not a lot of faith about, but I am someone who believes that what we need without a doubt is more of Jimmy Greaves. The more I get of Greavesy, the more my life achieves. So give me more of Greaves, that. And give me more of Jimmy Greaves. Imagine Jimmy's picture in every picture frame. Imagine all religion praising Jimmy's name. The world is just a candle and Jimmy Greaves is the flame. I want you give me Jimmy. It used to be his turn of speed, he left defences in a daze, now he rents his turn of phrase, and when I turn on my TV and Jimmy's there, my spirits raise, and when I'm in a blazing row and I'm in the process of rolling up my sleeves, I just think of Greavesy, and he relieves me. More and more of Greavesy is what this country needs. He's the man to sow the seeds of sanity. He's off the booze, he's on the ball, he's got a message for us all. He can help humanity to heal itself, to haul itself from this self-destructive stupor. He's what you call a trooper, I think he's blinking super. He's the trooper super duper, so don't give me Henry Cooper, cause he isn't Jimmy Greaves. People say that I'm loopy, and they think I'm nothing but a Greavesy groupie. But I tell them... You're not fit to wash Jimmy Greaves' moustache. Eddie, don't go for sofas or settees. Na, 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 na. Or those little tables that you have to buy in threes. Na, 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 na. The closest thing that Eddie's got to an article of furniture that she's bought. Eddie doesn't bolster the upholstery biz. There's a lot of furniture in the world, but none of it's Eddie's. Eddie don't like furniture. Furniture makes Eddie really miserable. Eddie don't like furniture. Boat, they offered him a seat. It was just a strip of timber, but it wasn't up his street. He stood himself up in the boat and made himself feel steady. Then he threw the plank onto the bank and said, Furniture, no thank you. Les meubles, non merci. Ah. 
When it's on a bun fire, burn it just fine Anytime that Eddie gets a number 29 bus Even if the six on top and plenty down below Eddie always goes where the push chairs go Does Eddie like furniture? I don't think so Eddie don't like furniture na, 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 na. Eddie don't like furniture na, 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 na. Have a game of hide and seek It isn't very long before you're found And in a fit of craziness Eddie took the legs off his dash hound That stopped him bashing around Eddie don't like furniture Eddie don't like furniture Eddie don't like furniture This is a poem about my mum's dog. Yorkie won't go for a walkie. The only order he'll obey is stay. The only trick he does is sit. He's a rip-off. <laughs> Mr McNulty, the laundrette attendant, left his laundrette to get himself a packet of fags. These boys entered with some laundry bags and they unloaded a number of small dogs into one of the tumble dryers. As they fumbled with the faulty coin mechanism, Mr McNulty returned. Oh no you don't, he cried, pushing them aside and pulling out the dogs. These dryers are for washing machine customers only! A dog's best friend's a man This is not surprising When you're only there to guard his fan An inch of wound down window It can drive you from your wits It's a dog's life They give you names like Rover They give you names like Rex And the same as the names they give themselves They've got other names for the other sex And they're rubbish as well They say dogs travel free on buses But I would like to pick a bone Dogs may travel free on buses, but not when they are traveling alone. It's a dog's life. It's a dog's life. It's a dog. Why so many dogs get to wear the blessed collar But not the other holy dogs It's one law for the people And it's another for the beasts Expose the canine's testicles But cover up the priests Back land to 
we can understand the substance of their talk It's a shame they think all we can say is I think there's somebody at the door Oh master can I have a walkies? I like it in the open though Rolling in the grass Striking up acquaintances and sniffing fellow creatures up the trees where they have recently been passed. It's a dark slide, it's a doggy's lie. Well bred dog, this one's called. One evening, John came home from work, went into the kitchen to make himself a nice cup of tea, and on the kitchen table, in a plastic bag, he discovered a large sliced loaf with one of the crusts missing. Actually, it was a very large sliced loaf, about the size of a rabbit hutch, and John, who lived very much alone, knew that he hadn't put it there, and wondered who had. Just then there was a rap a tap a tap at the front door. It was John's new next-door neighbour. "'Excuse me barging in,' she said, "'but you haven't seen my dog, have you?' "'What does it look like?' inquired John concernedly. "'Like a large sliced loaf,' replied the neighbour. "'With one of the crusts missing?' asked John. "'Yes,' replied the neighbour. "'She had a fight.' "'John smiled, went out into the kitchen, "'and returned with the mysterious loaf. "'Is this her by any chance?' he asked. "'And the neighbour said, "'No.'
I said, Pat, you are fat, and you are cataclysmically desirable, and to think I used to think that slim was where it's at, well, not any more, Pat, you've changed that. You love yourself, you flatter yourself, you shatter their narrow image of the erotic. And Pat said, what do you mean, fat? Um, from Pat, we move on to another friend, Colin. Colin was a vandal And when certain things were said Colin flew off the handle And he banged you in the head He went down the hospital To get it all sorted out Doctor said good morning And Colin knocked him out Colin said I'm sorry doctor Can you make me say The doctor said we don't know Certainly we'll have a go And we will try not to cause you too much pain And they took out Colin's brain cell When Colin left the hospital Colin, he was miserable what was Colin to do instead of banging people in the air? But then one day he walked into a lamppost in the streets And he discovered self-expression aggravating concrete Soon he was as right as rain and he couldn't complain at all He got himself a little job as a demolition after Now Colin does an art day's work and comes home at half past five He calls out mum it's me I'm home and I am still alive and then he runs into the living room into the wall And his mum says Show some consideration Won't you do it in the hall Colin Colin you're a naughty boy But you're my hungry little wave And by the way my little sweetie poop Your dinner's in the safe Colin! From the very beginning, I loved my glasses. The eye test made me feel important. I wanted to be colorblind as well. For some reason, I was never teased about them as a child, not even at the grammar school, where daily they would mock my briefcase because it was not made of leather. As I recall, there was only ever one boy who jibe aimed at my glasses, and this a fairly oblique one. Oi, double glazing. Where did you get that plastic briefcase? In adult years, I got a lot more trouble. On one occasion, a rabble threw a rubble at my glasses. It was after this that I decided to take action. I bought myself a leather briefcase, and the next day set out to face my building site tormentors. Somehow the briefcase in my hand was a stand against a land which had gradually lost its magic for me. A joyful absurdity in the face of the tragically commonplace. As I approached the contractors, for once it felt like my world.
Okay. What have you got in the briefcase then, four eyes? Was the question. Power. Power, lads, was my reply. The power of the human imagination. And I walked proudly and steadily past them in a shower of flying masonry. This is a song about someone who betrayed their glasses. dogs for you. The second one's set to music and the first one's set to words. This is the first one. Bad dog. The dog got my glasses the other day. I thought I'd have to chuck them away. But luckily they were alright. The other one's a bit more serious. This is called Very Bad Dog. I took Rover over to the park the other day I met another bloke with another dog on the way His dog was an Alsatian My dog was not He said, is that dog an Alsatian? I said, no And he said, why don't you get a proper dog? I said, Rover, ignore this copper. I said, Rover, let's show him that we can do a trick. And I pick up a stick and I hold it over Rover. And I say, Rover, jump out of the clover. And get stuck into the stick. And Rover jumps out of the clover And bites me in the arm Alarm, alarm My dog, my dog, why hast thou mistaken me? 
I am not calm. My dog has done me harm. In my arm, I show him the truth marks. See, Rover, where the skin is mover. Rover sees these nasty marks and he barks and he begs for forgiveness and yet I know that I must break his legs you naughty dog Miserable Malcolm from Morecambe had Rottweilers but would not walk em. They were stuck in all day, but no muck would they lay, because Malcolm had managed to cork em. The dog died, the other died. I buried her where she had buried her bones. And on the levelled earth, I laid out her name in stones. I was about to pick a rose to stick in her grave, when action froze. A thorn had torn my thumb, I saw the blood come. And the knowledge that I too would one day be dead, it struck me like a shovel in the features. I fell into an appalling bloom The bloom remained unpicked You're going to die, I mumbled As I replaced the shovel in the tool shed You're going to die Said the sky As I went up the path You're going to die Back in the kitchen I was massively oppressed by the prospect of the end But as I looked at the bright yellow bowl from which my friend had fed And the length of lead by which she and sometimes I had been led From somewhere I somehow drew strengthening You're going to die Boy, I shouted, you're gonna die And it's your reason for living I slammed my foot into the dog food bowl And I sent it scudding through imaginary goalposts You're going to die, I whooped As I dragged an unopened box of little dog biscuits Out of the cupboard and tore into it Oblivious to the coupon and I tossed those dry, nutritious, born-coloured fragments that my dog could never know into the air like so many pieces of confetti. You're going to die. I roared like the Yeti. You're gonna die. It was my war cry now. You're going to die. I trumpeted like an elephant. I did. The doorbell rang, it was the bloke from upstairs He said, I'll kill you if you don't shut up Knee deep in ocean Something in the ever steady knee cap Lapping motion of the ocean moves me to emotion. 
Something totally and finally benign in the briny makes these four eyes of mine wet with weep as if there was not enough salt water already in the deep blue I'm afraid I won't be going to the Edinburgh tattoo because to me a parade of weaponry and the capacity to hurt is about as pleasing as dog dirt on the shoe only poo is easier than the tattoo to get rid of to you it may be taboo to poo poo the tattoo but to me the tattoo is something to say to tattoo Excuse me. I'm on the British Rail property. You're not supposed to come past. 